and the trading. Um, just following on from the last video where we did some uh, functional drawings and placed some items into the 3D world to make your virtual prototype. Uh, last time we took on the roles of the electrical engineer with the functional drawing, then onto the panel builder to get an items in place. Um, we're going to continue from there, but we're going to show how those two people can help the technician. So what does the technician specifically need? He needs some drilling data so he can get the back bit drilled in the right manner. And then secondly, he's going to need some wires so he can physically move them through. And wire lengths and some other items as well to be able to get that done quickly and easily. And know that he's not going to make an error compared to the data that the first two guys have actually given him. So let's start with some of the drilling items itself. So here we'll go back to the back tape that we actually showed earlier. So here's our uh, here's our circuit breaker, here's our plug set on here. Um, but obviously there's a lot more on there. So you see we've got our trunking, we've got some items in here, we've got some inverter sets as well. And the first thing I'm actually going to show is the drilling view. Just by simply clicking on drilling view here, or obviously view and drilling view, I like to make sure I'll cut some stuff on mine. But um, very, very quickly I can start to see all the little items where physically I need to make a drill hole, physically put items onto the back base to fit. So you can see, when you bring an item in, even if it's an inverse that goes directly onto it, these little red dots then represent where something needs to be drilled. Okay, well this data is great having a 3D model, but again, people need to be able to use it in different ways. So one thing we can do is we can make a drilling view. So we'll, we'll make a new one, so a new drilling view on page 7. I'll see, I just press OK. So, and I have a new page. I go insert, graphic, 2D drilling view. And I'm just going to make it decent size on the page itself. And I can now have some sections on here. So I want layout space number A1. That's the layout space I'm using now. You see that here is the mounting panel. I can then say, oh, which basic items do I want to show? So I basically want to say, okay, I don't want to show the whole enclosure. What I'm most interested in at the moment is the mounting panel. Okay, yeah, please show me the actual mounting panel. I can choose mounting panel from top back, but in reality it's the same, it's just the mounting panel itself. Scale setting is automatic. I can show labeled if I want. I can show the dimensioning as well for all the actual sections. So again, we'll just make this plain and easy for now and just simply press OK. And here you can see all the little drill holes that have been placed out for all the items I physically need. And you don't just have to do it for the actual back plate. If I just move that across slightly. There you go. If I take a copy of that one, quickly and easily. Yep, there we go. Take a simple copy of it. Actually, I don't want the mounting panel. Actually, what I want in the edge view is I want the door. The door, there we go. I click on the door instead. I press OK. I can now see the drilling I need for the door as well. Okay, so these are representations. You're not physically going to build from these. It's just a good representation for you to see that you've got the drills in the right place. You can see that in the 3D model as well. So this is going to help somebody just to visualize it. So physically making the actual data, ePlan can then export some manufacturing data. So here we can see utilities, manufacturing data, machining. We can send out directly to the CNC machine. So again, is is, is the retail perforex and the carex when we get the rails. We can send it out to Steinhauser. We can send it out with DXS, so it can be for any other simple uh, sort of CNC machine that we need. And actually, we can send it out to a PDF building template, which is what I'm just going to send out now. You can see now I press OK, and we're now going to send out a PDF section for the whole lot. What else did so? Um, my field set, 297 cutouts exported exactly. And again, I think we press OK, and now I'm able to go and get to those sections. Once the export is finished, you can now see on here, I, I keep mine onto my D Drive System 27 export. Here's all the different PDFs that I physically need to actually show. I double click into the first one. Here we have one of the PDFs of the actual building template itself. But then, if you're still manually drilling things out in your workshop, we can see down here, we have our X, Y, 0, 0. And for every single drill hole, we can then see, I have my X and Y coordinate, and I see what I need to drill as well. So again, please drill a 6 mil section on there, drill a 4.5 on the next one as well. Again, and that then gets you through to every single one of them. Yeah? So if we just pan our way off, we can then see all the logic items as well. So this is where we put the inverters in. So again, you can definitely see X130. If you can plot this out to the exact size, which hey, it's perfectly possible to do, you can lay this directly over your back plate. The guys can see the exact drill holes for what they need and drill straight through it. Again, this is going to reduce the errors for the technicians 
it's called the panel builder and and the uh, electrical engineer has actually given them really good raw data that they can just simply grab hold of and use straight away. Okay, so now we're back in Ethan Control Panel. You can see I've got the drilling template switched on last week. I'll just switch that one back on. And we can now start doing some routing and some wiring to help the technicians out. So let's start with something really simple. I just wanted to highlight one area or just one section. I click on to route and you can then see the wires they jump in. You see very, very clearly, yep, yeah, black, blue, green. Yep, yeah, if I go back to my page, but wrong one, you can always use the jump function. So you jump, we can then see obviously black, oh, wrong one. So you've got black, green, and blue as well. Yep, yeah, green, you can start to see how it shows inside each one. The white side is obviously very important as well. That obviously then shows the white side that it runs through here. We can then do that for not just one wire, we can do it for the whole lot. So instead of having to do in individual sections, if I highlight everything, so Control and A, just like in Windows, I click on Move, and I can then move to the whole panel itself. It will take a few seconds, but we have a pretty big panel with a lot of wires in here as well. So we now let it all jump through, <coughs> and then you'll see all the wires across the whole system. I just pivot that around, you'll see there are wires that jump out to the door. Yes, we can have wires going across certain areas as well. And we can then see we have the wires coming out into the middle of nowhere, as you think of. Remember back from the last video, that is where we put our light. So if we just show that little selection over there, you can then see our lamp is in the right place as well. You can then see all the wires going into the right area. Okay, so if we then show the door, uh, just got to find the door right there, let's show the selection. We can now see the door on the front as well, and we can see the wires going onto the lamps and the switches on the door too. So obviously this is great, this is great information for the wiring, for the actual wiring team, but Again, in this model itself, it doesn't give you a massive amount, but obviously we can then give a connection list. The nice thing about a connection list, it can be reported. So here's a connection list just in here. Again, I can then see the size of the actual wire they actually need to be. I can put part numbers against the wire, so source, target, the part number of it, cross section, color. Again, you can start to see data can be passed through very, very easily, and it's an updatable report. Obviously, I've made some changes to this one as I've used it. So very quickly, utilities report and update. That's going to update my my report from the latest wiring section. You can see a little flash there to show that it changed. Again, I can then zoom through and show you all the data has now been in there. This is great raw data if they want to use actual list, but in reality, it's not it's not the the, the very best way that they can have the data. Other things that can happen inside here before we change over to our other program is I can then update things like wire trunking or the actual trunking itself. Obviously, these have dedicated sizes. The wires have a dedicated size as well. So I am able to do something called a fill capacity. So if I run an update on the fill capacity itself, I can then see nothing really happened to start with, but data has changed inside the background. When I turn on the fill capacity view, I can then see the items in here there's a little graphical representation there, it's just gone green. I can see actually the fill capacity of these items is actually not too bad. Yes, so you see all the little green sections in there. Well, I'll let this zoom in. If I just turn it back off again, you'll see that it actually goes away. But depending upon what you decide to fill for your sort of project, there are seconds in here that you can do that one. So if I just move on to fill capacity limit on here, I can now see when I do my routing, I can say, okay, I never want to fill up a uh, uh, trunking more than 80%. I want a warning at 70% to show I'm actually getting close. This means that right from the start, the panel builder and, and, and the electrical engineer are helping each other straight away by putting the data into the front, pass it through to the panel builder. He knows he's got the right size of trunking in there. The technician's not going to have a problem implementing this in. Okay. So you, so you can actually the data is able to pass across quite easily. Now, where do you need to go from here? Well, we need to help the technicians a little bit more, and we do have a program for that. So this is the one program change that we're actually going to make. Well, first of all, we need to publish this project. So I go to Project, and I go to Publish, just on here. I can see it here. I'm going to send this out to something called the Smart Wire Folder. So I press OK. I'm going to let it run through. This will take a few minutes, so we'll use some of the magic, and we'll see you on the next section. So moving into the actual smart light tool, this is where we're really going to help the technician implement all the electrical engineers and the panel builders' data. 
It's what is smart wiring. Okay, it's, 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 this is a this is a little application that can run on a Windows tablet. So it doesn't have to be a full blown PC. It just needs to be connected onto the server, and the data can be as we saw published from EPAN Pro Panel and then loaded onto here to help them get their wiring done. So let's start with menu and projects. We're going to start a new project. Here is the process that I made earlier. So I've published this project and it will now be opened. So it will take a few seconds to read in. But here we have the panel that we were messing around with earlier. So again, we can definitely see it in there. We can rotate it around. We can have a little section on there as well. And we can zoom in and out. And if you want to, you can show it in a much bigger scale if you still need to see it as well. Okay, so I'm going to make life that a little bit easier. Yeah, so the technician actually gets to use this as well. He gets to visualize the whole thing. Again, it's data that's been passed across from one section to another. Yeah. Okay, so from here we can then start to look at the wiring itself. I just click something onto a wire. Very quickly you can see, here's my source, here's my target, here's the length of the wire that I need to cut. The cable end is a little sleeve, it's still eight, the 8 millimeter sleeve, if it just let you go a little bit further. There we go, 8 millimeter sleeve. Again, if I visualize where it physically needs to go to, so this one goes to the isolator on the back plate. The second, i.e. the target goes onto the section on here. And I can see the direction I need to move from the source to the target to get where I need to go to. Again, very quickly on here. If you're still unsure, I mean, if, you've, if you've got it on a pretty strange view or something like that, or if it's a pretty long route, there's a little play button here that will show you the route as it goes around the actual panel itself. So it makes life that a little bit easier. Okay, you can always then click onto the multi view, so it goes back to front so you can see exactly where it needs to be to. This is all very, very useful for the technician to be able to visualize what you physically need to see. Again, if you use the drilling template, all the holes have been drilled in the right place. The items have been placed down because you know they fit. It will be an exact match. Whether he's actually going to put the wiring into the actual panel itself or whether he's going to do it on a table or on one of the vital units for being able to do the actual backplate manufacturing wiring, again, depending upon your company, this can be configured for what you need as well. All right, so let's see what he can do. So he clicks go onto the first wire. We get a little green tick on there to say, yeah, I've started the first wire. It is now in place. And you can see GB1A1FC12. Ah, there's a little chain section in here. So this is actually, this is part of the chain. I mean, these wires are all electrically connected together. This little functionality allows him to have a little quick look, GB1A1FC12. And you can then have a little look and see if that's actually connected anywhere else in this chain. So it does make a good difference to see, yeah, okay, I need to have a little check of that chain to make sure it goes to the right place. This one is by itself, but this one here, GD1F1FC4-1L1, this is the same as this one here, yeah? So it goes to the same area. The nice thing is, that means that when he goes to place this one, yeah, he's going to crimp it. That's brilliant. What he doesn't need to do, or she, in fact, doesn't have to actually screw up tightly the actual unit itself. So that one there, back to just go to view, would be a lot easier. This one here, doesn't have to screw it in because this wire is actually going to go in there as well. You see, yeah, I've now put both of them in there. I now route my wire back through. Which means do I need to take? Right, I can zoom in as it goes through. You see, yeah, that's the panel route I want to take around to the top of the next circuit breaker. Brilliant. I know where I'm going now. I've cut the wire to the right length. I click on go. I've got to the next section as well. You start to see life becomes that little bit easier for the technician. This is really good for multi units. Somebody wants three of these. Somebody wants five. Somebody wants ten. If you have a left-hand wire, you may take one route, a right-hand wire, you may take another. They may put the wires in, in a different order so the panel looks very different as you put it together. But by following the simple rules inside here, you can get a less experienced wireman, but then get 10 panels exactly the same. It's going to make sure that when somebody opens a panel once, somebody opens a the they know exactly where the wires are going to route, they know how they're routed. Again, you're taking data away from, well, you're taking decisions away from the technician because the panel builder has made those, tech, uh, has, has made those decisions. The person with that has the expertise and the knowledge as well. So again, just in case you actually do make a, a, a small mistake, maybe he's looked at this and said, actually, we could do it a slightly different way. Yeah, he can send a message. Um, could this route differently? Yeah. 
there you go. So if, if you ask them a question, you can send that over to yourself. You can then see the message when it pops up onto your server set, maybe through an email system as well. That then allows you to take a look at it inside the code panel, maybe make a change, maybe not. But again, the technician does have a way of being able to ask the questions and pass it back up to yourselves as well. So again, SmartWire, it's there to help the technician implement what the, the electrical engineer and the cabinet builder or the, or the panel builder has put in place. Seamless data. The electrical engineer puts down the part. The panel builder is able to then place that part in the 3D world. The routing is then, is then, the routing is then um, automatically placed down. And, no, and all those data can then pass over to the actual technician for him or her to be able to build the right specification exactly as the virtual prototype shows.